Good morning, today's lesson is 9.5. Equations and graphs, our essential question. How can you translate between equations and graphs? The solution of an equation in two variables is an ordered pair that makes the equation true. For example, two comma five is the solution of the equation y equals x plus three because five equals two plus three. A linear equation is an equation whose solution form a straight line on the coordinate plane. Any point on the line is a solution of the equation. Let's unlock the problem. A blue whale is swimming at an average rate of three miles per hour. Write a linear equation that gives the distance y in miles that the whale swims in x hours. Then graph the relationship. First, what formula can you use to help when you write the equation? So the equation is going to be the distance, right? So I'm going to put, so this is the distance. So I'm going to put D equals the rate, right? Which is the average rate times the time. Okay, so this is not a plus sign. That's a T. So now we're going to write a gr and graph the linear equation. So first we need to write the equation for relationship. So we have our distance equals rate multiplied by the time. So our distance in this one is y, because we don't know it, and our rate was three miles per hour up here, right? So three miles per hour multiplied by the time, and the time we don't know. So I'm gonna put x for time. So if y equals three times x. Okay, so if x is my time, and on this one I have x is one, right? Oops, and this one I have x is one then it's three times x, so it's three times one, so three times one is three. So my y coordinate's gonna be three, and we already know my x coordinate's gonna be one. So then when I graph it, I go over one and up um, three, which is gonna be in between the two and the four. So my next one, if x is two, then I'm gonna do three times two, because remember my equation is the rate times the x, right? And if the x is two, then it's going to be three times two. Three times two is six. We know our x is the two, and our y coordinate is now going to be six. So I'm going to go over two, and then I'm going to go up six. And the next one, if x is three, then I do three times three, and I get nine. So my x was three, and my y, because remember I'm filling in my chart, is nine. So I've got three, nine. So I go over three, and then, so I go over three, and then I'm gonna go up to nine, which is gonna be halfway between the eight and the 10. My next one, if I put, um, if my X is gonna be four, so I put my X four, then I'm gonna have three times four, which is 12. So I'm gonna have four 12, so I'm gonna go over four, and then I'm gonna go up to 12, and then I can actually make my little line. It does fall on a perfectly straight line, if. Miss Knoll had a ruler. <laughs> um, so you know that those are the actual answers for this equation, which is um, up above. Okay, this graph shows the number of beaded necklaces Y that Ginger can make in X hours. Write the linear equation for the relationship shown by the graph. You're gonna use ordered pairs from the graph to complete the, the table of values below. So compare the Y value correspondence with the X value. So if we have um, zero X, then we're gonna have zero Y. Two times zero is zero. And then if we're gonna have, cause it's basically, let's go back up here. I want you to write the equation. It might make it easier to understand. So we have, so the beaded necklaces is Y. So that's this one right here. And it says she can make, <clears throat> that she can make in, in X hours. We don't know how many hours they are. So this is saying if it's in one hour, if it's in three hours, it's even four hours, right? So. So to figure out what that relationship is, I'm gonna look at the points that they've already put here. So they have one and two. So they're saying in one hour, she made two necklaces. So that must mean that it's two times it, right? So two times zero is zero. Two times one is two. Two times, and I'm, I'm gonna put this three down here now, then I'm gonna get six. And then two times, since I'm doing four hours, it's going to be eight. So now when I plot my points, I can continue plotting along. So we've got three sixes right and then they did four eight okay so now I just kind of triple check to make sure that that would that answer was correct so the linear equation for this one must be 2x or 2 times x so 2x equals y so linear equation for the relationship is y equals 2x 
Explain how to graph a linear equation. Well, an equation can be used to find the value of a dependent variable for any value of the independent variable, including values that might be difficult to read from a graph. Compare representations. Describe a situation which would be more useful to represent a relationship with an equation rather than a graph. Well, if you're substituting the values of x into an equation to find the corresponding values of y, you could write x and y values as ordered pairs, and then you can graph the ordered pairs on a coordinate plane and draw a line through the points. If it doesn't draw a straight line, then you know that one of your points is going to be off, because whenever you have the relationship between the x and the y, and it's an equation that you're graphing, it should be a straight line. All right, let's graph another equation. So in this equation right here, we have y equals x minus 2. So in this table, they've given me what my x values are, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So I'm going to plug in those numbers here to find out what my y is. So for example, 2, if I plug in this 2, I get 2 minus 2, which is 0, right? In this one, I'm going to plug in 4, and 4 minus 2 is 2. And then in the next one, I'm going to plug in 6, and 6 minus 2 is 4. And then in this last one, I'm going to plug in 8, and 8 minus 2 is 6. So now I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to go, so I'm going to go, um, when I graph these coordinates, uh, 2 being the x and 0 being the y, I'm going to go over 2 and up nothing because it's 0, right? So I'm going to stay right there. The next one is 4, 2. So I'm going to go over 4 and I'm going to go up to 2. The next one's 6, 4. So I'm going to go over to 6 and I'm going to go up to 4. The last one is 8, 6, so I'm going to go over 6, I mean over 8, and go up 6, and then I'm going to draw my line. Well, it should be a straight line, but I don't have a ruler. Sorry about that. All right, let's graph this next one. We have y equals 3x. So let's just make our little box, and we'll graph a few points. So x, just like over here, I put x on this side, okay, um, and then y. So um, I can put random numbers in, right? So let's just do 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay? So that means I'm going to replace this x with a 1. And if I do that, it's 3 times 1, because whenever you have a letter next to a number, you multiply. So 3 times 1 is 3. If I plug in a 2 for this x, then I get 2 times 3, which is 6. If I plug in a 3, 3 times 3 is 9. If I plug in a 4, 4 times 3 is 12. So now I can graph. So, um... The first one is 1, 3, so if I go over 1 and up 3. The next one's 2, 6, so I go over 2, up 6. The next one's 3, 9, so I go over 3, up 9. The next one's 4, 12, so I go over 4 and up 12. I draw my straight line so I know that it worked. Okay, for the rest of them, this one is write the linear equation. So I already have my points. So I could draw my box to try and figure out what the relationship is. Or, you know, find the rule. We've done that before, right? So this is x and this is y. On this one, it's 2, 1. This one is 4, 3. This one is 6, 5. And this one is 8, 7. So what happened to 2 to make it 1? What happened to 4 to make it 3? What happened to 6 to make it 5? What happened to 8 to make it 7? Well, 2 is 1 less than, um, or 1 is 1 less than 2, and 3 is 1 less than 4, and 5 is 1 less than 6, so we could say that y equaled x minus 1. Because if my x is 2 and I minus 1, then I'd get 1. If my x is 4 and I minus 1, then I get 3. So my equation is right there. So on this one, you're going to do the same thing. You gotta, I would draw my chart and try to figure out what the rule is, and that's going to be your equation. Okay, and then on this one, they want you to graph the equation. So I have y equals x plus 1. So I could draw the little graph and do it, but remember, so at, for every x, it's just going to go up one greater. So if I'm here, it's going to be 0, right? Then the plus 1, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one, the next one, because it says plus 1. The other one was minus 1, but this one's plus 1. You know, again, like I could draw my little graph if I wanted to. I could put my x and my y. And if I had 0, then 0 plus 1 is 1. And so it would be, you know, 0, and I'd go over to 1. And then the next one, if I did 1 as my x, 1 plus 1 is 2. So I'd go over 1. Oh, actually, I graphed that wrong. Let me fix that. 
actually helps to make the chart, right? So I erase that. So let me go back and put my points. So zero and one, so I go over, oh no, I stay zero and I go up to one, and then one and two, so I go over one and I go up two. If I put in two for here, two plus one is three, so I go over two and I go up three. Let's say I do three as my x, then three plus one is four, so I go over three and I go up to four. Okay, so you can see. I actually had graphed that one wrong, so it does make sense to make the chart first because it helps instead of just guessing. All right, the rest you're gonna do on your own or with a partner, and I'm also there for you. Good luck.